So I'm Matthew. Hello and I'm Kay. Welcome to this Harvest Celebration on Sunday Live. We're so pleased that you're joining us. In fact, if you fancy commenting on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're joining us from, we'd love to know um, because people join us from across the world, from right on our doorstep to um, other continents, and that's really exciting. So wherever and whenever you're watching this, we're just delighted you're with us. If you fancy liking our uh, Facebook or YouTube pages, that would really uh, help you connect in with what's going on in the life of our family of churches. But for now, it's just great that you're here. Um, we're going to be welcoming Kay, who's just joined us on team in our, in our group of churches as our curate. And we're going to be finding out a bit more about Kay um, a bit later on in today's celebration. But to start with, we're celebrating harvest this Sunday and we're going to start with a prayer. So let's pray. Father in heaven, all good gifts come from you. You send the sunshine and the rain and it is through your love that we enjoy the harvest time. Thank you for, for providing richly for our needs and help us to share the good things we have with those who have little or nothing. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to join together in singing, Let All Creation Sing Before the Lord. Let all creation sing before the Lord, and every nation of the earth rejoice. Let all the trees lift a shout of joy, for the Lord is King. Let the deep waters of the sea resound Let every mountain, every hill sing out Let all the fields make a joyful sound For the Lord is King Mighty river, barren desert Howling wind and stormy weather Every canyon, every valley Sing a praise
Hope you enjoyed that song. It's a song that's been in my head all week as I've been thinking and looking forward to celebrating harvest this weekend. Well, we've got something which we haven't done that much of on Sunday Live, though we've done a couple. Uh, we've got a quiz. We've got a harvest theme quiz to get you thinking and challenge you about your harvest knowledge. Um, so if you love quizzes, brilliant. If you hate quizzes, <laughs> we really apologise. Um, it'll be over in a few minutes' time. Um, you've only got 10 seconds, though, to choose the answer to each question, and Kay and I are going to alternate. So if you've got your quiz heads on, let's get started. Question one. Crop over is the traditional harvest festival in which Caribbean country? Is it A, Jamaica, or B, Barbados? Second question. Churches traditionally mark the start of harvest as Lammas. But what did lamb of Lammas originally refer to? Is it A, a lamb, or B, a loaf? Question number three. What is the UK's most grown crop? What is the UK's most grown crop? Is it A, wheat, or B, oats? Question number four. In 2001, tennis balls used at Wimbledon began being recycled as homes for which endangered creature? Is it A, a harvest mouse, or B, bank voles? Question number five and a personal favourite. How many pumpkin spiced lattes did Starbucks sell in the drink's first decade? Was it A, 800,000 or B, 200 million? Question number six. The Bible reference, for whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. Which book does that come from in the Bible? Is it A, Galatians 6 verse 7, or B, Isaiah 43 verse 8? Question number seven. Which painter's work includes potato harvest from 1884 and the sower from 1888? Was it A, Rembrandt, or B, Van Gogh? Question number eight, an ecological question. What percentage of global greenhouse gases comes from agriculture? Is it A, 25% or B, 19%? Question number nine, which BBC radio drama has an agricultural story editor? Is it A, The Archers or B, Hazel Beach? And final question number 10. Name the baked food eaten during China's mid-autumn festival. Is it A, chocolate brownies, my personal favourite, or is it B, mooncakes? So we're sorry we can't repeat any of the questions, <laughs> but we're going to whiz uh, through the answers now. We're going to give you the question and the answer in double time. So here we go. Question number one, crop over is the traditional harvest festival in which Caribbean country? It was Barbados. Number two, churches traditionally mark the start of harvest as Lamas, but what did lamb of Lamas originally refer to? And it was a loaf. Question number three was, what is the UK's most grown crop? And the answer is A, wheats. And question number four, in 2001, tennis balls that were used in Wimbledon began being recycled as homes for the endangered creature, the harvest mouse. How many pumpkin spice lattes did Starbucks sell in a drink's first decade? 
200 million. Wow, that's a lot of spice latte. It's a lot of coffee. <laughs> it's a lot of coffee. <laughs> and the Bible book where the quote, for whatever a man sows, this he will also reap, is from Isaiah 43, verse 8. Do you know what I've done? I've got that question wrong. I've just, I just realised, and it's not Kay's fault, but some of you are going to watch this and you're going to comment, and I've given Kay the wrong answer. It's from Galatians 6, verse 7. I'm so sorry. I'm thinking I'm sure it's not from no. The vicar will swat up on his Bible knowledge for the next week. That's, that's my homework. Wow, how embarrassing. Question number seven, moving swiftly on. Which painter's work includes potato harvest, and the sower, it was Van Gogh. And the percentage of global greenhouse gases that come from agriculture is 25%. Which BBC radio drama has an agricultural story editor? It was The Archers. And sadly, the baked food eaten at China's mid-autumn festival is not chocolate brownies. It is mooncakes. I like chocolate brownies too. Mm. So how did you do? We'd love to hear... Um, so do comment whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, uh, put your scores in the comments section and if you've had a pumpkin spice latte then mention that as well. We'd love to take a straw poll on whether you're part of the 200 million. Kay has just joined us, she's in her first week with us. We're delighted um, to have Kay as curate within Ringwood Benefice which is our family of churches and we thought we'd take the opportunity uh, to ask Kay some questions and Kay was threatened to ask me some questions as well so we're going to have a conversation and get to know Kay uh, a bit more um, in the next few minutes so let's jump into it. So the first question Kay is mm -hmm. what is your favourite place to be? Which part of God's creation do you love the most? Is it is it the new forest or is it the beach? What would you choose? I have to say I probably would say the beach I okay. have to, there's something really special about water I just love the way that it moves it just makes me feel really calm and still okay how about you well I'm probably the same actually I've always lived by the coast mm. um, except for four years when I was living in Cambridge and it was essentially two hours yeah uh, whichever way you went to the coast and I've never felt more landlocked the mm. beach has always been um, really important to me favorite place yeah. absolutely <laughs> Next question, what is your favourite food to eat? What's your guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure, well, chocolate brownies obviously chocolate brownies. is, and I do have a, a really very good chocolate brownie recipe. In fact, it's called Ultimate Brownies. Oh. So, yeah, it is good. It does have quite a lot of chocolate in it. Do they live up to the, um, to the name? I think they do, okay. yes. Yeah. How about you? What would be your favourite food to eat? Well, and I'm not caught in favour here, but my wife makes a delicious white chocolate cheesecake. Ooh. And um, yeah, I really, I really enjoy that. You really enjoy yeah. that. That's a good choice, haven't you? We're both pudding people. We're both given puddings as, as our answer. Lots of other food <laughs> we could like as well. Okay, here we go. If you could be an animal, a bird or a fish, which one and type would you be and why? So I was thinking, I think I probably would be a bird because I'm a geographer. Okay. Part. And I just love to see things from above. I just love to see seeing things from a bird's eye view. Yeah. So I think a type of bird, I know, probably a swallow, something like that. Yeah, something quite graceful. Not like me, but, you know, I quite like to be graceful. How about you? What would you pick? So I should admit this was Kay's question. <laughs> and uh, and the, the thing that comes to mind is, uh, Sarah and I went, I'm going to answer the question the wrong way around, so and I went on holiday to Egypt mm -hmm. and I did a camel ride and um, there's a series of photos of me increasingly leaning <laughs> over the side of the camel, almost like a time lapse um, set of photos. Very good. And so I've got the hump with the camel's humps. <laughs> so you wouldn't pick a, a camel? So I would not pick a camel. So like what that. would be your favourite then? Well... Oh, oh, Lord. Tricky now. Put you on the spot. I know. There's, I've got two cats. Okay. And it occurs to me that they sleep when they want, mm. they go where they want, and they'll ask anyone for food. So, okay. so I think probably a, a cat. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So um, please do answer those questions for yourself yeah. as ever. Comment. Uh, we'd love to see um, whether you think you'd be a fish or a bird <laughs> or some kind of other animal. What is your guilty pleasure? Mm -hmm. 
Um, do comment uh, below whether you're on Facebook or, or YouTube. Um, we're going to go on now to chat a bit about our journeys and I'm really interested to find out, Kay, mm -hmm. about your journey to yeah. sitting here in a dog collar. Indeed, yes, quite an interesting place to be. Um, so I would say that my journey's been quite a long journey in lots of ways. I've always been a Christian. Um, well, you know, I went to church with my parents who kind of went in and, in and out themselves. Um, but um, probably I'll say we um, moved to Brockenhurst about 2004. Okay. And we really felt called cool there. Um, just that I sat down there one Easter, it was where my parents lived, and I just felt God really saying, this is where I want you to be. Really, it was quite an unusual moment. I don't think that God, it wasn't an audible voice, but... It was really very exciting, um, and so we moved down there. It all just fell into place, and um, yeah, we really wanted to get involved in living in a community. I was tired of driving to get to church. Yeah, and um, whenever we invited people to church, they'd always go, "Oh, it's, I don't really want to go to Slough because we live near Slough." Okay. Uh, so um, yeah, I wanted to be part of the community and to just get to know families and share Jesus with them that way. Um, and that was really exciting, probably a couple of years in, um, our vicar left and our children's youth worker left. And somebody said, well, why don't you fill in? Yeah. I thought, okay, yeah, I could do that. Just until the new vicar arrives and until they decide to appoint a new children's youth worker. And then I found I really loved it. Yeah. And um, I just love being, spending time with children, with their families, but also just because we were already so connected in, to the village in many ways. Um, and so when the new vicar arrived, he said, well, why don't you carry on? So we did, and that was, that was just really great. Um, yeah, young people ask such interesting questions, and they really challenge your faith. And having to prepare things and work in a team and work with young people, uh, it's just, it's a real blessing. really enjoyed that. Um, but one year I was at, with my kids at New Wine. I know you like New Wine yeah. too. Yeah, great place. And, uh, a great place. Um, and one of the leaders was talking about, in a children's group, it was a family uh, celebration, about how God loves to mend broken things. Mm -hmm. And somewhere inside, it just sort of spoke very much to my heart about, uh, yeah, that God is here to bring reconciliation and healing. Um, and I think we've all experienced things in life which have caused us hurt and pain. Um, and so that took me on a journey to become a counsellor. Wow. So I was doing that alongside my children's and youth work. And um, I started, uh, in fact, I did a placement at Ringwood School. Okay. Um, really enjoyed that. Loved working with young people. Uh, but it became quite clear that probably there was some sort of convergence between the two roles. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, uh, that spent some time thinking about what that might look like. And wasn't at all considering uh, becoming a, a, a vicar. Um, and was really surprised when God said, yeah, this is what I want you to do. I yeah. want you to become a reverend. Wow. Um, bit of a bit of a blue a, out of the blue moment, yeah. bit of a surprise, um, and so yes, um, immediately then went. Ah, I can't do that. That's not me. I don't have those skills or gifts at all. Um, but I felt God very much saying at that point, I will equip you and I will give you all you need. Um, and that's that lovely verse in two Corinthians, which talks about. Um, when you're weak that's when yeah. you'll know that God is there with you you come with open hands that will provide for all that you need yeah. um, and so yeah that's what I've been holding on to and yeah. I've kept pushing on doors and God has been opening them and we're, we're thinking about harvest especially today and yeah. Jesus sending out people into the harvest field and yes. there's that real feeling that you've been sent out and commissioned to for, your, for this new season of your life. Yes. That's, that's quite exciting. It is really exciting. Well, we welcome you warmly. Thank you. And we look forward to finding out a lot more about Kay's past and <laughs> um, how she's enjoying the present on future Sunday Lives. Do keep a look out. I'm sure Sam will be nabbing Kay for an interview for Ringwood Link um, ever so shortly. So do look out for the next copies of uh, the Ringwood Link as well. Um, we're thinking about Harvest today. And one of the uh, difficult things as we think about the environment is that God's given us this amazing planet on which to live. Mm -hmm. And we talked about whether we're uh, forest people or beach people, but actually both are, are amazingly beautiful. And yet we know that there are times when we forget to switch off the lights, things where we get to forget to conserve water. And all of these things have real impacts on our environment. 
Uh, and funny enough, when we were preparing for this Sunday Live, Kay and I both realised that we'd read a similar quote from a book by Ruth Valerio uh, called Say Yes to Life, uh, which is a, a brilliant book. And in the introduction, um, there's a Fijian pastor, I think, I forget, but it was a chap in Fiji who uh, pointed out that for us in the West, the, uh, the environmental catastrophes are things that we think about in terms of the future. But for the people of Fiji, they're experiencing them right now as a lived reality. So we're going to take um, the times when we haven't taken care of creation, hold them before God and, and say sorry to God who entrusted these beautiful spaces, this beautiful planet to us, um, to care for it and to steward it. And we're going to do that through song. We're going to sing together um, if the fields are parched.
have mercy, Lord. Renew the world you made. The Diocese of Winchester covers a large and diverse area, encompassing urban centres such as Southampton and the remote rural areas like the New Forest. Of the 1.3 million people in the diocese, over 20,000 of them regularly attend worship in one of our 375 church buildings led by our clergy and lay ministers. We support 100 Church of England schools, the staff who work there and the 30,000 children who attend them. And we do all of this to tell people about Jesus, spread the gospel and serve the common good. But all of this comes at a price. In fact, it costs nearly £13 million a year to run the Diocese of Winchester, most of which is spent funding the costs of our clergy and other ministers as they lead our local mission and ministry across the different communities that make up our diocese. We ask all our parishes to contribute to these total costs using a system called the Common Mission Fund. The fund allows clergy to be placed wherever they're needed, to share the love of God with as many people as possible. We can only do this thanks to the committed generosity of all our parishes and their church members. Thank you for supporting the Common Mission Fund. What you give really makes a difference to our diocese. So I hope you, you enjoy that song and I hope you, you've been able to identify maybe one or two things that, that you can do, that, that I can do to, to take better care of God's creation. And, and then if you felt able to respond generously to um, to the given video then we just want to say thank you so much whatever you give um, and whatever that means to you we're, we're, we're grateful uh, for that we're gonna hear from the Bible now and Kay's gonna read to us so the reading today is from Mark chapter 6 verses 30 to 44 the Apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught he said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognised them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. And he had compassion for them, because they were like a sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away, so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. They said to him, Are we to go and buy two hundred denarii's worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they found out, they said, Five loaves and two fish. Then he ordered them, he then ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set for the people. And he divided the two fish among them all and all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of fish. Those who'd eaten the loaves numbered five thousand men. Thank you, Kay. We're going to try something new on Sunday Live this week. We're going to have a conversation 
about the Bible reading rather than a traditional sort of sermon or, or talk. Um, and our heart behind doing that is we'd love you to join in with us. Mm. Um, it'll be far more interesting if you do. And the way we'd love you to join in is just by commenting um, in, in the comment section on whichever platform you're watching. Um, Kay and I will be talking here, but if that sparks any comments or reflections, I've got to let you know, um, <laughs> then do comment uh, below and be a part of the discussion. So just to start with, let's ask the question, mm. what jumped out at you um, from that passage? I love the bit where it says Jesus looked at them and had compassion on them. Mm. For me, that's one of my favourite lines, uh, actually in the whole Bible. But um, I particularly like that line here. Wow. Yeah. Uh, for me, it just occurred to me um, in the way that I've never thought about it before, but where it talks about everyone having their fill. Mm. One of the miraculous things about this story, which is told in most of the Gospels, is, is how 5,000 men plus women and children mm. were fed. But I kind of always have this idea in my head that um, when you have a dinner party and you've got a fit, you know, um, guests who are last minute in mind, you have to spread the same amount of food yeah. even more thinly. But the fact that it says that they all ate and had their fill has mm. just jumped off the page at me. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it? Yes, the word filled. Yeah. You're right, I think I probably skipped over that before too. I, ju I just hadn't seen that before. Mm. And I, I wonder at the disciples, Jesus' followers, uh, when, when, they, when they're told, you give them something mm. to eat. I mean, we lose sight, don't we, that these disciples had been with Jesus for such a short amount of time. Mm. And... You know, Jesus keeps putting them in these challenging situations that require immense faith. But if I was in that situation, it was Jesus talking to me and Jesus said, you give them something to eat. I think I would start, you know, patting my pockets, <laughs> checking my bag, yeah. seeing what I had um, to share and started to get increasingly anxious mm. at, at how I was going to do that. Mm. Um, but it's really interesting. They went to him first. Yeah. They, were, they were always looking to him to solve the problem. Yes. Like, so much like us, isn't it, that we often look to God to solve the problem. And actually we have those things ourselves, perhaps, to, to, to feed, to do the things that we need to do. Absolutely. Yeah. You can see that Izzy's joining in <laughs> the conversation behind us. There was no way of ignoring that fact. Um, but I hope, I hope this is sparking ideas for you. What has leapt off the page um, or, or from what we shared uh, for you. I, I think um, I just, I, I'm amazed really at the journey, the life journey of the disciples. Mm -hmm. And I mean, my life often feels like it's on a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And I just get that same sense with the disciples that from, from fishing communities and wherever Jesus had called them, that their mind just must be overwhelmed mm. yeah I, I i know on days when izzy um who was at the window just now um has a packed day and it's full of experiences and conversations and and stuff that um at night time she she often wakes up because i think her mind is going mm. 110 miles an hour have you found that in your in your christian journey that it feels like a roller coaster at times I think so. I think often life can be really, really busy. And it's probably only when we look back do we see actually yeah. God in those moments if we don't calm down and if we don't spend time perhaps, yeah, doing those moments where we can just reflect. Yeah. I think over the years I've learned to reflect more. Yeah. I think there's probably more space now in my life, definitely, Good. Uh, to, re to, to reflect. I think probably your life is a lot busier with two young children. <laughs> only one of them's behind us. <laughs> yeah. Um, my mind's just gone blank. There was something that you said which just really, um, re really grabbed me um, about life's journey. But I wonder where your life's journey has taken you and whether you can see signs of God within it. And, and we'd love to talk to you um, about that if, if there's something that, um, that you wonder uh, about spiritually, if there's something to do with life, meaning and purpose that you want to chat about, do reach out to us. We'd love to. We'd love to connect with you. 
and explore those issues together because Kay and I are just on that same journey of discovering life, meaning and purpose with Jesus. So we hope you've enjoyed our brief conversation about Mark 6. Do continue the conversation wherever you're watching from, especially if you've got people around you to enjoy that with. And do keep the conversation going in the comments section. But we're now going to go over to Alison, who's going to lead us in our prayers this week. Thank you, Alison. Let us pray. At this harvest time, dear Lord, we acknowledge that all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Help us to receive them gratefully, to use them wisely, and to share them unselfishly as good stewards of your bounty. God our Father, we thank you for our world, for all your gifts to us, for the sky above and the earth beneath our feet. We give thanks to our farmers who grow crops in the fields, care for our animals, provide our daily food, the fruits of the earth. We praise you at this time for the gift of nature by which our earth is made fruitful, for the labours of all who gather in the harvest. Lord, you have made the world rich in resources. We pray that we may learn to use them responsibly. Dear Lord, we are blessed to have an abundance of food, but we know that there are many with less than enough to eat. Food is wasted while millions are starving. Nature's resources are misused. Forgive us and open our knees to the hungry, wherever they may be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The corona pandemic has changed all our lives beyond belief, but it has also made us take stock of our lives and our world. To appreciate our resources, our family, our friends and our homes. We hold in our prayers those who are burdened with worry. The effects of the pandemic means many have lost their jobs and business, causing a huge burden and anguish on family and households. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all who suffer ill health in body, mind or spirit. We pray for the people who care for us when we are unwell, the doctors, nurses, carers, our families, friends and our neighbours, for the kindness and understanding they show. We hold in our prayers all in our benefits who need our healing prayers to give them strength at this time, faith and courage to improve. There are many people suffering the effects of the coronavirus the world over in different ways. We pray for their recovery, dear Lord. We ask you, Lord, to give us strength to rise above our anxiety. Help us all to face the future with the knowledge that you are by our side and walking with us on our journey. Let us take a moment to pause and remember someone in our heart and say our own special prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the Lord Jesus Christ be near us to defend us, within us to refresh us, around us to preserve us, before us to guide us, above us to bless us, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forevermore. Accept our thanks, Heavenly Father, for giving meaning to the way we pray. For giving patience as we live to each and every day. For giving power through your presence. We ask that it may never cease. Help us to be grateful as we strive for inner peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Alison, for leading us in prayer so beautifully. If you're watching and there are things going on in your lives, mm -hmm. Um, then again please do comment with anything that you want to invite us to pray for. Um, we're here during the week and we'll continue at our prayer meetings and at communion to, to include your prayers if you'd like us to. So do comment below or get in touch in, in other ways with us uh, and we'd love to, to pray for you wherever you are and whatever is, is on your heart or mind. We're almost at an end. We're going to join together in our last song to 
a familiar tune, but the words might be new, but they'll appear on the screen. It's Lord God, we bring you thanks and praise. said we're almost at an end of our time together today i hope you've enjoyed joining us and whenever and wherever you're watching it from know that we'll be praying for you in the week to come we do have um some more new people on team this week who are actually at a harvest celebration as you watch this um directing traffic and cars and people um they're luke and abby from moorlands college they're joining us um, placement for the next couple of years and that's going to be really exciting and we'll find a way to introduce them on Sunday Live in the very near future but um, if you're part of our church family or if you're someone who prays please do pray for Luke and Abby um, who will become part of our, our church family who are part of our church family they started last week um, 
Do connect with us on social media at Ringwood Benefice and on YouTube. Um, we'd love to hear from you um, and we hope that you have a really blessed week and we hope that in some conversation or in some situation that you might become aware of God's love and compassion um, being present. Let's pause to pray as we conclude our time together. Jesus, Lord of time, hold us in your eternity. Jesus, image of God, travel with us the life of faith. Jesus, friend of sinners, heal the brokenness of our world. Jesus, Lord of tomorrow, draw us into your future. Amen. Amen. Happy Harvest! Thank you.